You're welcome. Are we on KLOS now? We are live on KLOS now. But that was on track, you know. No, that was that. Yeah. Lip sync. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That wasn't live. But you sounded like it when you sang along to it in there. He was, Perry was singing along. Some of you in the audience saw that. That was amazing. <laughs> you, know, you know how I do it, how I did it, Taylor? Because I sing all day long. So does it, do we have any dog lovers here? <laughs> so that's what I do on my walk. I, uh, yeah, do concerts for my dogs. <laughs> Lucky dogs. I was at the filming of that stop video, you know? I was standing yeah, right behind really? Perkins. Oh, serious? yeah, up at Mount Baldy. I was there. I'm going to watch for you. I've looked like a thousand times. I can't find me. Can, can I ask you a question? Sure. And, uh, it's almost a favor, and I'm going to extend this favor out into the universe. Sure. Okay. So, you know, we came up. Really, I mean, people think about us as like a 90s thing, but we weren't. We started 1984, I think, something like that. Isn't that crazy? Yep, there, there I remember. There was a 1984. <laughs> it almost doesn't seem like before digi the digital age that there was any real life. <laughs> I know, but yet the funny thing is it was all life all the time because if you walked up here in the late 80s or mid 80s, or went downtown. Oh, this place be buzzing. Yeah. Oh yeah, this was the uh, this was the club with no name for a while. Yeah, and yeah. Then, anyways, rock live music was. I mean, we came up when live music was blasting out of right. every one of these clubs. Yeah, but that's the funny thing about it is, it, I almost feel like the world was more alive then, because we didn't have yeah. anything to like uh, prove that we were alive. Yeah. So we just. You know, had to do it then. Did the craziest shit because we didn't think it was being like recorded Monitored. for content later. Like the, uh, recently, somebody that was at my house yesterday, wanting to he wanted to digitize everything in my house. So for, he, it's like digital for posterity, digital content for for social media to like to post later. And I was really embarrassed because I thought, like, I only have, like, ten things. Because it, we didn't have cell phones to take pictures every five seconds. You know, you had to, like, have a camera. And then you have to go and get the picture developed at a Kodak place. Yeah. So you yeah. only usually had, like, one person that you knew that had a camera. <laughs> As a result, we practically didn't exist, you know, until the 90s. That's what it feels like to me, anyway. It's like now, I, now everyone's. You know what I'm talking well, about? Well, now everyone's in their own movie. Exactly, but like 1982 was like, oh my God, look what they're doing. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the, it's funny because at that time in music, to bring back up Jane's and coming up at that time, rock and roll was kind of getting a little. I mean, unless you really went deep into the underground, hard rock was getting um. It's just not, it wasn't interesting anymore. And then I remember someone showing me, uh, telling me about this Jane's Addiction live record first. And that was Triple X. That was before the Warner Brothers years. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I hear a hard rock band. But it's a lot more than a hard rock band. They're a funk band, and they're a disco band, and they're a jazz band, and they're a bebop band, and they're everything, but still all coming out of a garage. And um, it just, you saw where the future was headed as far as rock music, and this was before any words like alternative rock or even Nirvana or any of that. Uh, you know, it was before that, and I really think that when I I think back to hearing Jane's Addiction that first time, just going, ah, oh, rock and roll has a chance. Yes. Yeah. So, thank you, thank you, Perry Farrell, for keeping rock and roll alive for me. I almost well, became. It was hard work, but you're, you're welcome. <laughs> I almost became a jazz fusion drummer. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah I almost was, started drumming like this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, what do you think? We got. I always uh, thought, like, well, you know, I've seen drummers do that. Like, don't they know that they they could change and they can keep going? You yeah, know, they yeah, don't have to tell yeah. anybody. I used to go like that. <laughs> Just turn your hand over, man. Nobody will know the difference. What? <laughs> But, um, you know, this, uh, this weekend, Taylor, I've been invited by 
the uh, Johnny Cash family and the June Carter family, the Cash and Carter family, yeah. to go out to Nashville. Wow. I'm going to be singing some uh, Johnny Cash, June Carter songs with Etty. Amazing. And uh, I am so excited about this. You have no well, idea. Well, you, you were humming them to me the other day. It's going to yeah, be amazing. Um, love, it's a burning thing, and it makes a fiery ring bound by wild desire. I fell into a ring of fire. No, I fell into a burning ring of fire. It went down, 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 and the flames, they got higher, and it burned, burned, burned. That ring of fire, that ring of fire. Oh, wow. Well, you guys are very lucky to have heard that. 95.5 KLOS, we're taking over Jonesy's Jukebox. Thank you, Perry Farrell, for that, and more come. And the, re and the reason I mention it all is because you think we didn't have cell phones. These cats, man, they were having fun <laughs> down in, what was it, like Mississippi? Oh, yeah. They Where were, my family's they, from. They were on a farm. They were picking cotton, those cats, by the time they were 10 years old. But those guys were so rebellious. Oh, yeah. You talk about, like, you know, you hear their life in their sound of their song. And that's why I just can't wait to meet this family. <sighs> I, I, I just can't wait to that's meet amazing. the offspring of Johnny Cash and June Carter. Absolutely. Amazing. Absolutely. We okay. need that, man, because this digital music, I mean, it's cool, you know, it's exact, and it can get really heavy and deep with the subsonics. But it does not have a soul. Dig that, bro. Agreed, a hundred percent. Okay, I think we're gonna play "Middle Child." Okay. This is, a, oh, yeah, this is a song off this record I made. Get the money. Perry helped me with a, a track or two and gave me his time and love. And uh, this song is about my middle child. And it's funny because I was gonna. Oh, are we playing it? Do I have time for a little discussion? So I wrote a song called "Son of Mine." And um, I played it for my son, and he's like, I hate it. It doesn't sound like Metallica or whatever. And I'm like, oh. And then I sent it to Josh Homme, and I'm like, what do you think of this? He goes, what are you writing, the Shrek 3 soundtrack? And I went, all right, that song's getting punted. But before I did that, my middle child, my daughter Annabelle, my little twin, she said, well, you have to write a song about me. And I was like, okay, what a middle child thing to say. Guess what? Here it is. Thank you, Kayla West, Jonesy's Jukebox. Ah, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Shucks. Um, well, that was uh, Middle Child. And then I think after that was Pirate Punks. We will be playing that. Correct. Yeah. You know what? I think, it, you know, if the universe was truly fair, you'd have a number one song on this new record. I, Come on. <clears throat> you know, like I say, man, you can really hear the soul. A, you know, of a musician, when they're good, that's what makes the world go around. And you, man, the world, the world's really happy that you existed, Taylor. Oh, man. I love your music. I love you, man, but it comes really out in your music. That's what the, Dude. That's it, man. I think I met you here the first time. I was telling you that earlier. Yeah, it might have been that. There's this, like, secret door back there. Oh, maybe, yeah, we were behind Point the Johnny head. Depp secret door over there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the 90s were crazy. <laughs> but, but don't sleep on the 80s. Yeah, I'm don't sleep you. on the 80s. Yeah, the 80s had something going too, for sure. Well, you know. It hasn't we, what, been told. The story really hasn't been told because, like I say, we didn't have cell phones. So it's almost as if we were like, didn't exist. Or you came out of nowhere. But let me tell you what's really happening is Los Angeles had musicians coming into this city by the droves from everywhere hoping to get signed. And we knew every one of those guys. Like, we knew the groups that were signed, but we even knew the, the groups that were unsigned. That's how far things have gotten. Absolutely. Like, people don't even know the signed groups now. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Perry, when did you first get to LA proper? I think it was like 1980, 1980. 81. By 82, 
I had my first group, Psycom. 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 We were underground phenomenon. Yeah. You can um, still find the record. You know what? I don't know how you would do it, but you could. I printed up 500 copies. I. I we had a manager. She was actually um, a, um, an escort. A lady of the night. <laughs> yeah, but she was. She like didn't stand there. On the corner, she had the clients, you know? <laughs> and she liked us a lot, Bianca. She was crazy. I mean. <laughs> I love it. And we needed help. <laughs> she was a good manager then. She helped us, we helped her. I love that. Did you guys play clubs in LA like this, or did you guys? Or was it... You know, no. Um, I mean, I have played here a bunch of times. Yeah. DJed here when the DJ culture was happening. Remember Sal? Sal used to be the... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, he was my buddy. And then my wife, Etty, was an original pussycat doll. Yep. And the pussycat dolls... That's not... Uh, pussycat doll. But um, back in the day, before they were a, a musical act... Right. You can't see my fingers in quotations. They're <laughs> radio people. But um, they were just this... Hot little number of of girls dancing. That's why I was here. Yeah, the that's when I met you. Pussy got dolls, <laughs> and she was the token Asian pussy oh, cat. Oh, Atty, she was supposed to be here with us today, but she, yeah, she's yeah, over it. She was over it. Did that last minute. Oh, I can't. She texted me. But you're you be boys okay, have fun, aren't you? <laughs> she said, you boys have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're having fun. We are having fun indeed. Mm -hmm. I think you told me a story that one of the first people you saw when you got up here was the singer of the Germs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Darby Dar Crash. Darby Crash. And I, I mean, and I didn't even know, I didn't know who he was or anything like that, but uh, there was a place, I hope it's still here, it was called Okie Dogs. So oh, yeah, they got Okie Dogs. So you guys had to have been punkers. <laughs> so the punk rock kids, this was when I was, I was living in um, Newport Beach. Uh, I cannot see you to, in Newport Beach. Well, no, I didn't have, it wasn't like I had real estate or anything. <laughs> I, uh, I ended up getting a job where I was a liquor store, a liquor delivery guy. So I could end up in a place like this, but I would be here to deliver liquor, and then I'd have to sign off, and then I'd go to the next joint. And so, <laughs> so anyway, um, but I, of course, you know, would come up here on the weekends. Of course. And uh, went to this spot, Okie Dogs, after this. We went to this all-night underage disco. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but... Odyssey, yeah! <laughs> the Odyssey! You would see the oddest people too, like the Michael Jacksons came out, and we would take off our shirt and dance on the podium and rock out. <laughs> Do Amel, Amel Nitrate. <laughs> I was hot. Gabby, you were there. I was sweating hot. <sighs> do we, do we need to go to... with myself. <laughs> Dancing with myself. Okay, yeah, here's a song myself. that Perry... <laughs> this next, that's good. Okay, on this album, like I said, I've enlisted a bunch of, of my friends in higher places to help me make music. And uh, this next song... It features uh, Dave Grohl screaming oh. and Perry Farrell singing the chorus and me kind of filling in the verses. And um, there's actually a reference to a Jane's Addiction song, Pigs and Zen. And we just made a video for it, which will be out this Friday, or though today. It's coming out today. Sorry, what am I thinking? Oh. And um, We and can't play the video in here, can I we? I wish we could. Yeah. Maybe it's later. really funny. It's really fun. You'll it's dig funny, it. you and it's, see it too. it's it's like a great song. Oh man, I kind of do this. I first, I yeah, the video. You have to see the video. Anyways, so I asked Perry. I said, "Will you come sing on this song?" And he did an amazing job, and I can't thank him enough for it. So, you, you're the most underrated musician. I think so too. I think you should. <laughs> you should be like the world's number one musician. Oh man. <laughs> Oh man, it's you, Dave, and then me. No, 
Oh. Uh, <laughs> no, it should be you. And then Dave, then me. Oh. <laughs> With that, here's a song about being married. And if you're a man and you're married, you know at the end of the day, it was always your fault and you blew it. And after I really blew it, after I really blew it, was Porno for Pyro's Pets, which was, uh, that was a, that, we, I didn't see that song coming when, okay, first, let me just say we were all devastated because we were all, I mean, Jane's Addiction in a weird way kind of became like a Grateful Dead kind of thing. It, it, not in a bad, I mean this in a good way, like when you went to see a Jane's show, everyone looked like kind of freaks and they were like, you know, but there was everyone there. There was the metal guys there too. They're like, well, these guys are really good. And then there was like the cool people and the punk people and the this people and that people. But it was a collage of people that all just kind of like, and an event, it was a Jane's, a Jane's concert was an event. They did seven nights at John Anson Ford on their first record. And then later on went on to do, uh, you know, uh, Lollapalooza, which you curated and headlined. And, um, and then you said it's over. And we were just like, what the hell? You guys just started, man. And, uh, and then you said, but I have this new band. Ta-da. Yeah. Porno for Pyros. Right. So, so tell us about Porno for Pyros, Perry. Oh, uh, all right. <clears throat> yeah, I know. I could kick myself. I, I was going a little bit too fast. Uh, next thing I knew, I was standing in the airport, having just come back from it. Hawaii and... The last Jane show? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the thinking, Naked Jane show? Yeah, the Naked <laughs> Jane show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, I, I mean, I'd smoke so much crack. That ah! <laughs> <laughs> it was like nothing to me. I was in my bedroom, you know? Oh, you people are here. Would you like to hear Pigs in Zen? <laughs> <laughs> I love the first porn of Pirates record. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, man, we, we had... Um, you know, we had a certain, you know, we had swagger, or what's the word oh, I'm yeah. looking for? <laughs> we were fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> we're out of our minds. It um, was a different sound, though. Like, it was. It was Jane's, well, but was different, cool though. It was cool because... Um, Pets. Pets, yeah, yeah, man. Mike Watt uh, added that crazy jazzoid, yeah, yeah, speed yeah. jazzoid. Yeah, yeah, and Peter De Stefano. Peter it's was a great surf rock guitar great, player in a yeah. way. Yeah, you know how to surf. So he sound. had the the carion, carionis right. of uh, uh, you know a Mexican big wave rider right. playing, and he actually was in a surf band. It's, you first can first tell. Band. Yeah, it's it's in there. I like that. That that I that record to me is. I mean, I know a lot of people know about the first Porno for Pyros record, but it's like. It's really you guys being just super creative as well. Stephen Perkins, one of my heroes, your drummer from Jane's Addiction. <laughs> I mean, every once in a while, I'll be on a mountain bike ride and a Porno for Pyros song, like Miha, or one of those songs comes up, and the drumming is so creative and just yeah. so, um, and like islandy and like all these different influences. And, and I'll text him, I'll go, dude, gosh, packing 45, then the drum tracks on that is so damn good, dude. Is it packing 45 or 25? Uh, it's 25. Ah, well, gas, don't 45. I, so I used to what pack is packing 25? Well, <clears throat> I used to pack a pistol in my, uh, in my boot until <laughs> they took it away from me. <laughs> <laughs> Why? So it was a and so 25 fit nicely. A 45 would have... <laughs> <laughs> it would have been showing up a little bit it too would have, much. It wouldn't do. It would, I would have started to like <laughs> hobble. <laughs> you just shot your foot off. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. Maybe so. Oh, but that, those were cool days, man. That was around the time of uh, the riots. Yeah, the LA riots. I, I had a good. I hate to say it, but I had a pretty good time <laughs> during those riots. <laughs> It wasn't my store, you know, like now that I'm all grown up, I, I do regret having. <laughs> yeah, when you have kids, man, and your whole taking idea things, of things from changes. people's establishments, but they were insured. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We're going to do, we're going to go into, sorry, very professional here. 
Um, we're here on Jonesy's Jukebox, not to stop that amazing story, because it was amazing. Um, uh, Jonesy actually played on a song on this record, too. Like, uh, and it's a cover. I thought I'd put a cover on the record, because people don't really do that anymore. You guys did it on, on live, your first live I, record. I'm so down with singing. It doesn't have to be. It just got to be like I'll sing. If you're, if you have like a Johnny Cashman, he was an ass kicking. Yeah, totally, mofo, man. man. You know, like totally. I love singing his stuff. Well, before I go into this, I wrote a couple songs with you on your, or at least one. Definitely, we wrote together on your on um, the Kind Heaven album. Yeah. And the coolest thing that as an exercise that you did, it was me and you and Chris Cheney, and we we're at your house. At Chris is a bass player for Jane's Addiction now, and he plays bass on this whole record. And as an exercise, you said, let's just start playing some old Beatles songs. And we just sat around, not even the right chords, just playing them, getting the rhythm. Yeah. And, just, and then you said, yeah, let's do it. I want to hold your hand. She loves you. Yeah, let's do Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the next Simple, thing. Simple. Yeah. But uh, what I want is I want us to like. Catch I, a vibe. <laughs> yeah, I want, I want us to, to, to be like we be around a campfire. Right. And we're cavemen. Right. Like well, that are. kind of music, you know, like we don't need pressing any buttons or where do I plug this in? No, nah, man, let's just like let our souls just start to soar. Absolutely. I'll never forget that day. But um, the, the, we're not playing that song right now. Yeah, I want it I wanted like that. So that or The Who, like early 1960 to 62, dun, 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 dun. when they were just, you know, they would do sets yeah. in, in the basements of these clubs and then the girls would come out to see who were these cute guys. Hell yep. And then the guys would say, there's a bunch of cute girls staring at these cute guys. <laughs> Let's go. And that's how the scene would get started, you know? So that's what I'm looking for these days. I'm looking to, to kind of spark and get a new scene going because <clears throat> th this whole $1,000 bottle service bullshit. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> they got a button. They got a button for that. I mean, I'm just dying to go out, but uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I left my credit card at the fucking restaurant. But, <laughs> no, you know what I mean? I want to I wanna get back with people that want to get together, celebrate life, get real. I want to, you know, I want to see some freaky people. I want to have a laugh. Absolutely. But I wanna, you know what I mean? But I, I want to I touch real people. Touch people. Here's a song originally by the Yardbirds and then covered by Jeff, the Jeff Beck group. And it's called Shapes of Things, first song. And I, then I decided to make a cover of it, of their version. And I got Steve Jones to play on one side of it and Pat Smear to play on the other side of it. So we got the, the king of punk guitar in LA on one side and the king of punk guitar in England on the yeah. other side. And then Pat Smear does a beautiful solo, and Chris Cheney plays bass on it, and we'll just jam on it, and here it is. Oh, that was Shapes of Things by My Little Band. And then into the Sex Pistols, God Save the Queen by obviously Jonesy. So back to this thing where Shape. I'm saying that you might be the greatest musician alive. Can we talk a little bit more about this? Okay. Sure, why not? This is, this is why I'm campaigning for this. Because, see, we have an expression in the water, the best surfer is the guy having the most fun. So I'm going to extend this onto land. The best musician is the musician that's having the most fun. That's why I'm saying, Taylor, you're the best musician. <laughs> I learned so much from you, dude. Yeah. I really do. I know you don't want to hear that. It's true, nah, though. It's true. I, I read a lot. I, I, every time I, you're I always in there. I plagiarize So did I, dude. That's all clip art right there. That's all clip art. That's just all clip art, man. Little, little Queen, little Jane's Addiction, <laughs> little Who, little uh, Bowie, a lot of Bowie, yeah, uh, lot all of, all of, of it, you know, all the ones, and little Sex Pistols, and and. Uh, Thank you so much for letting us take over Jonesy's Jukebox today. That was really fun. Yeah. It was actually fun, wasn't it, Perry? Is it done? Are we done? <laughs> we can go pretty soon. Really? It's Yeah, it's like... Oh, no. I know. We're just kind of getting started. Yeah. I know. We, I'm, I'm trying. I feel really? like we should do a podcast or something. 
Perry and Taylor. I think that we. I think that we'd be very popular. I if think we it did would that. too. Did you guys subscribe to that podcast? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I think we're, are we good to go right now? Oh, man, thank you so much, Keith. Thank you, everyone. Wow. And thank you, Perry, for getting up and doing this thank with me. Thank you, Taylor. Give all it of up, you guys. Taylor Hawkins. Yeah. Thank you so much. And let's all, let's all wish beautiful, hopeful thoughts for Steve Jones. Yeah. Because we love him. Miss Time to come man. get love back man. here, Jones. Yeah, I'm supposed to thank some people here, so let me put on my readers, and here we go. Well, I love you right back. Los Angeles, man, it's a spot. Okay, Subaru, thank you for sp sponsoring, which actually I drove my Subaru Baja here. And they love, and Subaru's loving uh, car company, yeah, too. Yeah, I love, yeah. There you yeah. go, the KLOS see, Subaru I see live stage. See, all the time. Bro a brew wings food truck for lunch. Did you guys get some of that? Woo! We had a little snack before we came on, we did, didn't we? The legendary Viper Room for I, having I us. had the... Um, I had the impossible wing. It yeah. tasted just like a real chicken wing. Yeah. The... <laughs> Taylor Hawkins Coattail Riders, get the money with all my friends like Perry and everyone else. It's out today. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out at the fabulous Viper Room. Yes. History. History. We love you guys. Jonesy, get well. Rock on. Thanks, Sal. <laughs> Thanks, Sal.